pickle. Hit the air raid siren. Time for Monday morning fallout. Monday morning fallout, and we overreact to the football weekend. And uh, what a football weekend it was. Pretty darn good. Can I get you to fix the word brief on the yeah. third? I'll start my opening kick. 16 brief thoughts about week nine. So I, I, I tried to like sum it all up into like one cohesive thing. And like it said we have 16 things. Thought, and I was just like, what if I just n- jot down all my thoughts? And I came up with 16 of them. Here we go. North Shore's big game experience won the game against Tascosita. Yeah. North Shore was down. They were behind for most of this game against the Tascosita. If you missed it, you can go back and watch it on Dave Campbell's Texan Life. It was a showstopper. And there are... A lot of teams that would not have found a way to win that game. A lot of teams. Mm-hmm. Most teams, I would say. But when you take a look at the big game experience they had on the field, specifically the quarterback spot in Caleb Bailey, that, to me, was what was the difference in the ball game. North Shore was cool under pressure. When the chips were down, they made big plays. That big game experience won them the game. That's thought one. Thought two, North Shore and Atascocita might be the two best teams in Texas. I yeah. I was I went back and forth with the panel when putting together the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Associated Press, Texas High School Football Rankings. I think there's an argument to be made that North Shore should be number one. And I think there's an argument to be made that Atascocita should be number two. Duncanville might have something to say about that. Duncanville's in the mix. North Crowley's in the mix. Yeah. Westlake's in the mix. We'll get to them in a moment. Atascocita has the head-to-head over Westlake, so that helps. But I think North Shore and Atascocita, I think there's a fair chance that that game we saw between North Shore and Atascocita is actually a matchup of the two best teams in Texas. And we could be heading for a rematch. And I would like to see that. Three, Nederland's win over PNG was not a fluke. Nederland won that game. Nederland was the better team on Friday night. And the numbers and the computers will tell you it was a big upset. 21 points. Port Inches Groves uh, was projected to win that game by 21 points. A, rivalry tings. B, Nederland's defense showed out. Played and simple. Their defense played, I think, their best game of the year and came up with big stops. And I think they... I think they put Port Nature's Groves in a position where they were uncomfortable, where they were chasing the game. And in a, it, what's strange is, again, we talked about how PNG has had, has this big game experience. Nederland looked like the team, the veteran team. Nederland looked like the team that was coming through when it mattered most. They got Hubert Thomas going late. They figured things out defensively and really diagnosed, took away the things that made Port Nature's Groves go, took away the running game. And I thought I think Nederland was plain and simple. They were the better team. They mm-hmm. beat Port Nature's Groves. Hard stop. Thought four. We're now looking at South Oak Cliff and Port Nature's Groves in the second round of the playoffs. That's insane. You want to talk about ripple effects? What that means? Let's say Nederland wins that district, which right now it would take something pretty crazy for that not to happen. If Port Nature's Groves finishes second in the district, that means they're playing South Oak Cliff in the second round of the playoffs. We would have a rematch of the 2022 and 2023 state championship games in the area round of the playoffs before Thanksgiving. Insane. Five. This is a different, more physical Hitchcock team. Okay? Last year when Hitchcock played Columbus, they got bullied up front. Columbus was dominant at the point of attack. This year, Hitchcock basically played them to a draw. And I think the big difference for them has been their defensive lineman, Malcolm Simpson. For all we talk about Lloyd Jones, all we talk about Kelshawn Johnson, all the playmakers they've got. Malcolm Simpson, their defensive lineman, I think has changed the way they play defense up front. I think their offensive line played very well. And they were able to come up with big plays because they were able to match up up front. That is the difference for Hitchcock this year and why they are... Well, thought six, six, 
No, I'm not counting. Six. Columbus will be fine, but three A Division one's wide open. Wide open. Mm-hmm. I th- I was ready if Columbus had beaten Hitchcock. And certainly, look, Columbus is throwing for a two-point conversion at the final gun um, to win the game, right? Or in overtime. With Grayson Rigdon not really playing. With Grayson Rigdon kind yeah. of half in the game. So I'm not burying Columbus. If they had won that game, I was ready to crown them. Yeah. I was ready to say they are certainly the team to beat. And they may still be the team to beat. But 3A Division One, I think now has a slew of contenders that can all play for it all in a couple of weeks. Seven, Westlake is still the king of Austin, but Summer Creek looms. Now you're thinking, who cares about that? That's, that's in the state semifinal. I like this Westlake team. I really do. I think that the defense and the special teams are their specialty. I think they've got a solid quarterback in Reese Wise. They look like the favorite in Division Two. It looks like they're going to go Division Two route. They look like the favorite in Region Four. I think Region Three right now is the favorite over Region Four. Right now, I project that as Summer Creek over Westlake. That is the biggest thing here. But Westlake, a fantastic win in the Battle of the Lakes, an old school defensive slugfest, the kind of the kind of game that's going to make Tony Salazar smile. Like that was a vintage Tony Salazar game. Their defense played fantastic, and their special teams came up big. Eight, Sunray can win the title in 2A Division One. Mm-hmm. Sunray now has wins by multiple scores over Panhandle, over Canadian, over Stratford, over Childress, over Abernathy. What more do we need to see? They are complete. That's the word. The word is complete. They are not just Armando Luan. He's been fantastic. They are not just Armando Luan. Their defense is excellent, and they have a number of different ways that you can they can beat you. Sunray can win the 2A Division I state championship. Will they? 2A Division I, Region 1 is going to be tough. But they can do it. I think that was proof of concept on Friday night. Whatever number. Nine, I think. (laughs) They're going to build a statue of Robert Jones in Bay City. Yeah. Bay City beats El Campo in consecutive years for the first time since 2004, 2005. It's been 20 years since they've beaten El Campo in consecutive years. And Bay City comes out and does the dang thing. They hold off a late El Campo rally and they win the they they win the 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 big rivalry game. I am Bay City's for real. I am in on Bay City and for Robert Jones, what he's doing down there is is spectacular. Ten, I think. <laughs> Alito might be vulnerable. One of the things that I think flew under the radar, we didn't even talk about Alito and Richland all that much last week Mm-mm. because we thought Richland's really banged up. Not sure they're going to be able to, to, to hang with them. And it's Alito, right? At home. Alito might have shown some vulnerabilities, especially on the defensive side. And if a relatively wounded Richland team can do that, can force them into overtime. Now, Alito survives, and then the name of the game is stacking him in the left hand column. But Alito might be a little bit vulnerable, and Richland may have exposed a couple of things that can work. 11. Allen is capital B back. They beat Prosper 22-7 to in just a grinded out rock fight and win the ball game. They're going to finish 10-0. It is time to start taking them very seriously. 11, I think. West Orange Stark is capital B back. They beat Silsby. West Orange Stark's for real, guys. Like, this team is for real. Hiawatha Hickman after a couple of years of, of trying to kind of retrench this program, they are back. They're playing terrific defense. They're explosive. West Orange Sharks for real. Uh, I think this is 13. I think. <laughs> 13. Don't overlook Mason's win over Holland. I think that's an under-the-radar win. Mason was playing a good Holland team, and they smoked them. Mason is playing exceptional ball right now. And in 2A Division One in Region 4, which no longer has Shiner, they may be the chief challenger to fear in Region 4. 14, don't ever look Edna's win over Goliad. That was a big state-ranked matchup, and Edna shooed Goliad away. Edna looked fantastic in their win. 15, Alvin Shadow Creek showed they're a threat because of their defense. 
They beat Pearland there without their starting quarterback, and it didn't matter because their defense stood on its head. I am very impressed with the Sharks, and they are a team we should be paying a lot of attention to. Very impressed with them. And 16, Pleasant Grove is going to be a problem. Yeah. Ple- Pleasant Grove, we talked about this. Pleasant Grove played Gilmer, and they beat him. Pleasant Grove is very young. Very, very young. They are going to be a problem for the next three years. Okay? This year and the two after them, because they've got a ton of sophomores. This is this is very reminiscent of the first the the first like like embers of the that that original Pleasant Grove run from like twenty sixteen to twenty eighteen, where they were very, very young, they were ahead of schedule, and suddenly it's not just this year, it's the years moving forward. Josh Gibson is doing it again. It's time to take to treat them with a lot of seriousness. Pleasant Grove. It's going to be a problem. Those are 16 brief thoughts about week nine. <laughs> Game of the week. Frisco Wakeland 65, Frisco Lone Star 59 in overtime. This might be the game of the year so far. So we're just going to play some highlights here from our friends at NBC Sports Engine. There is our buddy, Texan Live Zone Kyle Yeomans on the call, right? Mm-hmm. And a unbelievable finish. Another thing to remember in this one, Lone Star is undefeated, number two in the state, looking good. Wakeland is a huge underdog in this game. But we pick it up late fourth with Lone Star down before all hell breaks loose. Boyd at the line. He'll make a check with me here. Steps back into the shotgun. Passing to his right. Looks that way. Boyd lining it up. Throwing it on the muddy. Dean into the end zone. Touchdown, Lone Star. Fire, Mangum, and Treadway are all to the near side of the screen. Pressure there from Maples. He avoids it. Steps up in the pocket. Throws a strike to Treadway. It's caught. First down. Clock stops momentarily as the chains reset. Jack Minsky to send this one that has already been a classic to OT from 43 yards away. High snap. It's down. Plenty of distance. This one is through. Marvelous Minsky sends Wakeland into overtime. They put Meyer in motion. Maples runs left. He's going to be stacked at the one. Turnover on downs. Maples is sandwiched. And Lone Star stands at the goal line. Initially, it looked like Maples had an opportunity to get into the end zone. Timeout for an injured player. The speed of that Lone Star defense to meet him at the goal line. Lone Star trying to put it on ice. Hoyt will push to the five, keeps the pile rolling, keeps on rocking. The ball popped out. Wakeland's got the football. They've got a return. At the 30 with blockers up in what? front. Austin Wilson, what? he's going to take it all the way back. The Wakeland miracle inside Ford Center. The craziest play you will ever see. Wakeland was dead to rights, and they win it in overtime. 65-59 the final for Frisco. So that's cool. <clears throat> um, th- there's just so much going on. Let's not overlook the fact that Wakeland piped a 43-yard field goal to send it to overtime. Mm-hmm. 43 in high school, folks. Uh, and then, of course, Austin Wilson with the one of the plays of the year, uh, a strip and 99-yard return. In overtime. In overtime. When, the, like, like, basically, Lone Star could have kicked a field goal on third down and won the game. Yeah. 
but of course, that's not second guessing it. They're doing the right thing. But in, just an unbelievable individual play uh, from Austin Wilson and Wakeland stuns Frisco Lone Star in our game of the week. Tepper's play of the week. This one flew under the radar. Wichita Falls Memorial played Lubbock Cooper, state ranked Lubbock Cooper, mind you, on the road in Lubbock. Not an easy drive, Wichita Falls to Lubbock. They found themselves down seven with about four seconds to play. And Wichita Falls Memorial pulls off what I can only refer to as the Maverick Miracle. Hear from our friends at the, uh, I believe it's a Maverick Radio Network. Uh, you have to see how Wichita Falls Memorial and Lubbock Cooper ended. Seconds on the clock. Here we go. Final play of the game right here. Four seconds left. Crowds on their feet. Mavs playing down to the wire for the second week in a row. Castles at quarterback. Drop back pass. Pressure coming. Has time. Going to the end zone. Has a man. He's got it. Touchdown Mavericks. Touchdown Mavericks. Touchdown Mavericks. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Are you kidding? I don't know who caught that ball. I'm looking to see. That was Kenji Johnson. Kenji Johnson just caught that football. And they're going to go for two. They're going for the win. Mavericks going for the win. Gutsy play call right here. 43-42. We're going for it right now. What a gutsy performance by the Mavericks. They're going for it. Holy cow. It's time. Kenji Johnson just made the most incredible play. Oh, my goodness. Here we go for all the marbles. Going for two. Rolling to his right. Looking, looking, looking. Has a man. Mavs win. Mavs win. Mavs win. Mavs win. I don't believe what I just saw. Pandemonium reigns. Mavericks win. 44-43. And down goes the number eight team in the state of Texas. Mavs win. I'm really sad he didn't hit us with the this is what dreams are made of. Pretty wild stuff. Great that was awesome. Wichita Falls Memorial. Great call. The great call from the Wichita uh, from the Memorial Mavericks Radio Network. Uh, there you go. All right. It's time for the Dude Rock Dude of the Week. And it's Houston Westbury Christian running back Hunter Morgan. I got an email about this this morning. So we don't normally do a ton of spotlighting of private school six-man games. Yeah. Houston Westbury Christian beats Sugarland Logos Prep uh, 111 to 90. Okay, a high-scoring six-man game for sure. Not entirely unprecedented, but whenever you have 200 points scored in a game, like that's that's noteworthy. Hunter Morgan carries the ball 29 times for 715 yards and 16 touchdowns. Good lord. 29 carries. 715 yards and 16 touchdowns. Hunter Morgan of Houston Westbury Christian, my dude of the week. I bet he slept so good after that game. (laughs) He averaged 24 and a half yards a carry and he scored 16 touchdowns. What do you, like, as a defensive coordinator, what do you do? Like, just like pour water on the field? Yeah. Now it's time for a very special NFL minute. My mom, our NFL chief NFL correspondent, is in Italy. Oh my gosh, she did this from Italy? Do you think that stopped her from filing it? No, she's married to the game. Here's the NFL minute. Hi, this is Tetmon from Florence, Italy, giving you the NFL minute for this week. I'm highlighting the Cleveland Browns' surprising victory over the Baltimore Ravens. These guys play for the Browns and they also play Texas high school football. Hakeem Edgeman went to Garland High School. Dustin Hopkins went to Clear Lake High School. Miles Garrett went to Arlington Martin. James Prochi went to DeSoto High School. 
Jermaine Ifidi went to Houston Westside, and finally, Deontay Freeman went to Texas City High School. That's it for this week. See ya. Thanks, Mom. Our chief NFL correspondent, my mom. Incredible. Married to the game. That's insane. Married to the game. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks, Mom. I hope she's enjoying Florence. I hope she is, too. She texted me. This is true. Mm-hmm. She wore WhatsApp to me, whatever, on Saturday morning or whenever it was. She was like, uh, we're here in Rome, and uh, and I just heard about all the upsets on Friday night. Wow. <laughs> Married to the game. Stock up, West Mesquite. It's time to start taking them very seriously. They're 8-0. They just beat undefeated Carrollton Creek View. They have got which is a wild juice. statement in and of itself. Correct, but Stephen Jackson and the Wranglers are eight and zero. They are favorites to finish ten and zero. They are for real. It is time to pay attention to what West Mesquite's got cooking. Stock down Tatum. It's not so long ago that Tatum was state ranked. They lose their second district game to Atlanta. Kind of get blown out, forty two to seven. They are. They're going to be favored this week against White Oak, but they finished the year at Jefferson. State-ranked Jefferson. Spoiler alert for the rankings reveal. State-ranked Jefferson. If they lose that game, they would finish fourth in district and have a first-round playoff matchup with Winsboro. That is serious business. For Tatum, this was a really critical loss, I think, to Atlanta. So certainly keeping an eye on what's going on there in District 838 Division One. Now it's time for the Matt Step. He got that dog in him. Player of the week. And now, the Matt Step. He got that dog in him. Player of the week. Hey y'all, Matt Step, Dave Campbell's Texas Football here in the press box at SciFair FCU Stadium, where it's halftime of the Sci Spring Sci Park Saturday Night Game. But I'm not here to talk about that game. I'm here to bring you the Week Nine Matt Step. He got that dog in him award. That's right. It's time. And today, the winner of the week nine, Matt Stepp, he got that dog in him award, is none other than Cy Ranch defensive end Nicholas Fisher. In today's 35-34 win over previously unbeaten Cy Woods, the Oregon State commit had a dominant game along the defensive line, consistently getting pressure on the Cy Woods quarterbacks, holding down their running game, But the biggest key of all, he blocked not one, not two, but three kicks in the game. He blocked a pair of extra points, including the extra point in overtime that was the difference in the game, and he also blocked a field goal. Congrats, Nicholas. You, sir, have got that dog in you. This has been the Matt Step He Got That Dog in Him Player of the Week. Thank you, Matthew. It's time for my final shot, which is that the playoffs start now. We are in week 10 now of the Texas High Football season. 10. 10! Double digits. Which means for some teams, this week is the last game of the season. Mm -hmm. They are blowing up basketballs on Monday. Yes. So for many teams, there are win and in, lose and out situations, either functionally or like, you know, spiritually. Mm -hmm. For a lot of teams across the state, the playoffs start this week. And that should ramp up a little bit of the intensity. Friday is November, y'all. That's Football crazy. playoffs are here. It's time to start taking it seriously. That's my final shot. That is a very brief Monday morning fallout. 